Welcome to the moment of vital truth of the redeemed Christian Church of God, House of Praise, hosted by Pastor Andrew Adelecki, whose prayer and ministry for over two decades has set generations free throughout Europe, Africa, and America. As Jesus is being lifted up, divine intervention is about to become a common occurrence. Expect movement, marvels, and miracles. Isaiah 43, I'm going to read there. This is the word of God to the children of Israel in the midst of bondage. And God came with the word of encouragement as usual. If the devil told you that God always counts the sin, all your sins is counting them, counting them, counting them until your cup is... No, no, God does not count sin. He doesn't count your sin. When you make a mistake and you tell God you are sorry, he, allow, he, he says, okay. When you say sorry and you repent of your sin, he forgives you your sin. Now these are the children of Israel in the midst of bondage and God was giving them a word of encouragement. You won't expect that from human beings anyway. But you can expect that from God. That's why it's God. Adam and Eve sinned against God and God, even in the midst of their sin, was already making arrangement for their victory. For their tomorrow. He was already considering, already, in fact, before they sinned, he's already done it. From the Bible says, the, from the foundation of the world, Jesus was crucified. Amen. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. How many times do we remember things? We know how to remember bad things. Many people don't remember. How many people, how many people remember good things? They won't remember good things. People remember the, only the bad ones you did. That one sticks to their mind. God is saying here, do not remember former things. Because you know it's difficult. Every time they want to move forward, that memory will keep on haunting them. There's anyone here that a memory is haunting. I know the message of this afternoon is not for everybody. It's for some people. Today's message is for some people. And it's because God loves you and he wants to do something beautiful with your life. Now consider the things of old. Behold, I, God, will do a new thing. You know why I know this message is from the Lord? After service, I went to the room and a couple came to me. They are pastors. Their church is in the afternoon. And they came to me. They showed me their bulletin for the day. It is ex this exact scripture. Isaiah 43 and they put God is doing a new thing do not remember the things of old and God brought them here they said God brought them here this morning to write everything that he, he, he was talking to them and affirming what he's saying to them and that's why I know this message is being preached today because of somebody and that person is you in the name of Jesus now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a road in the wilderness. That's God. It's only God that can do something like that. My goodness. And rivers in the desert where people least expect. The beast of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches. Because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. And I say in the name of Jesus, because of what God is going to do in this season in your life, people will give praise to God. You know, sometimes people get jealous of you and they get to a stage where they can't get jealous of you anymore. We have someone like that in the city. He'll be looking. <laughs> After a while, he's gone so far that you just say, this one has gone too far. Just let's just leave him. Let's not try to run after him. Let's just try and beat ourselves. Let's be our own competitors. Compete with our own selves. That will be your situation in the name of Jesus. Those who have been talking down on you, looking down on you, sneering at you, jeering at you. God will take you so fast, so far. <laughs> that they will not be able to explain your victory. The amen I'm getting here is not exciting me. How much more exciting God? Amen means it shall be so. When I push a prayer point to you, excuse me, catch it and say it is so. 
whatever you say with your mind is what is with your mouth is what will be established for you. I say your enemies will not be able to outrun you. <laughs> ah, they will look at you. They will, we don't know what is wrong with this one. We've tried and tried. <laughs> look, I have other things to do. God will get your enemies busy. <laughs> You know what it means for God to get your enemies busy? They will be so busy, they won't have time for you. God will get somebody's enemies busy here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You see, when I didn't have understanding, I used to say, we have no enemy. Nobody has enemy. You don't understand. It is not by choice. Ah. The enemies of God are your enemies. Those who hate the fact that God raised you for such a time as this. Those demons, those principalities, those human agents, those are enemies. And you do not romance human agents. Excuse me. You don't play with them. You don't joke with them. Glory be to God. I didn't have understanding before. Now I know. <laughs> when I found myself on an hospital bed, then I know that enemy, the devil is not playing games. So if you normally come to church to play games and to look at babes, <laughs> and then you don't understand yet glory be to God let's leave that there comma <laughs> I don't know what you went through last year financially emotionally maybe you failed in business, in career in your marriage, maybe morally relationally you have tried so much to let them love you. You are playing, you are, you are going down so low so that they will just love you. And you keep on failing in that area. God wants me to tell you that it doesn't matter what failure, what mistakes you made. That is then. This is now. I said that is then. This is now. That is that. This is now. It's two different things. Amen. Glory be to God. So I started to talk about few people that were failures and how God transformed them. We talked about Peter. We talked about David. We talked about um, uh, Apostle Paul who was Saul. And we saw how God took him through very furnace of affliction. You can read 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. I'm the chief of sinners. That's a failure. 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 30, read it. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, read it. My grace is sufficient for you. Read it and see how God helped him. And how God raised him up. That today, we cannot read the New Testament without talking about Apostle Paul. You will see. You will conquer in the name of Jesus. You will see and you will conquer in the name of Jesus. So I started to talk about starting over, and I use the word start as the acronym. The first S, the S, stands for stop to make, to stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. That's the acronym for A, that's A. I mean the S, stop making excuses. I, do, I want you to know that there's no moving forward and starting over if you keep on making excuses about the mistakes you've made before. You made the mistake. Just know that you make the mistake and don't complain. And don't grumble. Don't say anything like, forget about I should, I would, I could. That is then, this is now. You made a mistake, own up to it. You can listen to the tape of the first service. Then I talked about tea. Take an inventory of your life. When you have as accepted that you have made a mistake, you contributed to the problem, there's no way you will have a problem that you, won't, you contributed to it one way or the other. The devil can scar you, he can harm you, but he cannot destroy your life without your permission. He can't ruin you without your permission. Now then you want to take an inventory of your life. And that's where I was in the second service when I rounded up. Amen. Take 
take an inventory of your life. That's something we don't do. You missed it in 2013. Now take an inventory. Take an inventory. What have you experienced? What have you learned from the experiences? Personal experiences, education experiences, spiritual experiences, painful experiences, everything. Your pain is your gain. Don't let it go to waste. Use it. What have you learned from it? You will always learn a lesson. Then, you need to ask yourself three questions, which I was talking about. Three questions. What have I learned from my past experience? What did I learn from it? You must learn something. You must have learned something. And what are my assets? God will never leave. It doesn't matter how messy your life became in 2013. He will never leave you without a witness. He will never leave you without someone. Everybody may have packed it in because of you or left you alone, stranded. Look around you. There's an asset left. What is your asset? Health. Good health is an asset. Do you know that? Having your mental faculty in the right place is an asset. It's an asset. It means that there's hope for you. Tell your neighbor, there's hope for you. Mm -hmm, there's hope for you. Your freedom is an asset. You are not in the prison. That means you can do something with your life. Your freedom is an asset. Some of us don't know what freedom is until you find yourself in a place where there's no freedom. That will not be your portion. And so someone is saying in their heart, how can I find myself in a place where there's no freedom if I don't get into trouble? Ah, may trouble not find you. Yeah. <laughs> that is a powerful prayer. I've known many that just sit down, they are pushing nothing, nothing is pushing them, and trouble finds them where they are. Trouble will not find them. <laughs> trouble will not find its way to you. <laughs> trouble will not find you in the name of Jesus. Then third one, who can help me? Remember, we are taking an inventory. Who can help me? Who can help me? Who can help me? Maybe people that you have even ignored. Maybe people that you see in church and you just pass them by, you think they are nothing. Who can help me? Look closely. There's somebody. An acquaintance. A friend that you think is no good for nothing. Some people won't befriend nobody if they are of no use to them. Who can help me? Look around you. Open your spirit. God, who is it? Who is it that can help me? I need to get out of this mess. I'm starting over. There's somebody you have, you have strategically located to help me. Who is it? Maybe your wife that you wake up in the morning to always abuse. Not knowing that what she carries is exactly what you need. Maybe your husband that you look at and you say, my goodness, look at your mates. Look at what they are doing. And you're just sitting down in front of, um, what do you call that thing? PlayStation. Not knowing that even in front of the PlayStation where he is, <laughs> there are some things he can deliver to you. Now, I'm not saying men should start playing PlayStation and, and, and sit down at home. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm just trying to say is, sometimes you think someone is totally useless to you. And yet, he is the solution. I do not have time to go into examples in the scripture. A maid, it was a maid that helped Naaman. A maid. Hey, from Israel. If you know what Israel meant there to them. No place, a non-entity, a nobody. There is an asset and there is someone that can help you. Amen? Maybe a support group. Maybe your church. Your church that you talk about every time you go to the hairdressing salon. <laughs> this same church. That church. And you don't know that what you need is in that church. And yet you have used your mouth to tear it apart in the barber salon. Not knowing that it is this same church that God has established and orchestrated to catapult you to where you are supposed to be in 2014. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, may the Lord help you. <laughs> may the Lord help you and guide your mouth. <laughs> Glory be to God. Friends, I hate friends. I don't like friends. No friends. Friends, are, excuse me. It doesn't matter how much you hate friends and you don't like friends. There may be one friend. It's not impossible with God. Maybe a mentor. 
look around you. Maybe a mentor. Maybe someone that is like an accountability partner that you keep on running away from. How many of you know that darkness, you know, when there is light, darkness always runs? Maybe it's that same person you are running away from and hiding from. That is your solution. May the Lord help you. I'm going to run to the next one because of time. The next one, stop making excuses. Take an inventory of your life so that you can move forward. Unless you take an inventory, you can't know where you have gone wrong, what you should be doing. If not, we'll keep on repeating the same mistakes. I think I said in the service, um, first service that it is insanity for you to expect something different to happen from what happened last year if you keep on doing the same thing. If you did exactly what you did in 2013, playing around and eating burger, if, you, if that was all you did in 2013, you, will not, you should not expect something different. But if you started this year fighting this spiritual warfare, knowing and recognizing that God wants to help you but he wants to grow you, then I can assure you, you have started on a good footing. This year has no choice but to be different from 2013. You see, this year will be different for you in Jesus' name. And the A of starting afresh is act in faith. Look at everybody and say act in faith. Whatever fear drove you right through 2013 into 2014, doesn't matter the fear, I want you to know you can replace that fear with faith. If you're going to move forward, replace every fear. The fear of man. Fear of the circumstance you went. If you want your circumstance to change, excuse me, ride the motorcycle of faith. To get to that problem, to that solution, the vehicle you need is the vehicle of faith. Believe God. Believe the Lord your God. You'll be established. Believe his prophet and you will prosper. Just believe. Only believe all things are possible. If you look through the scriptures, we look at Matthew 9, verse 29. The Bible makes us to see two blind men were crying after, after the disciples, after the apostles. And was crying, I'm sorry, was crying after Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus was ready to, to heal him. And Jesus said, let it be to you according to to your faith. That was what the word that caught me in what Jesus said. Let it be to you according to your faith. Let it be to you in 2014 according to your faith. That means you, if it's going to be to you according to your faith, whatever it takes to grow your faith, you got to do it. You can't grow your faith in front of the television. You cannot grow your faith walking around the streets of London gyrating from party to party you cannot grow your faith going to Emmanuel club on Friday night and God knows where you were on Saturday and my goodness you have landed in church especially in the choir on Sunday morning choir forgive me you've got to grow your faith grow your faith by listening to the word of God Grow your faith by going to the Bible study. Do whatever it takes to grow your faith. It is faith that you need to get to the other side. It is faith that you need. Look at him and say, collect your faith. Grow your faith. You've got to grow your faith. Whatever you are expecting in life, you need faith for it. have achieved great things for God as Christians, it's by faith. You see this building? It's by faith. I remember when we bought the building in Camberwell, I mean in, in Peckham. It was about a, uh, nearly a, mil a million. A million pounds. And do you know how much we had? 50,000 pounds. Every time we were going to the man that sold it, we felt like fools. One day, he just asked us and said, you've been coming to me. 
Really? How much do you have? My husband and I looked at ourselves. I looked at Papa, he looked at me. 50,000. I felt silly. But you know what kept us going to him? Was faith. And do you know the faith worked for us? The next thing he would say, he said, no problem. I, can, I could not believe my ears. He said, no problem. I'll be your bank. It's like I've never had something like that. He said, I'll be your bank. You owe me. I've never seen someone wanting to sell a big property like that and say, you, you owe me. And he gave us conditions. And by the grace of God, that's another story for another day. We met the conditions. Quarter to embarrassment and disgrace of not meeting this condition. We started to cry to God. We were still owing him about 20,000. And that 20,000, if we didn't pay it, he was going to take the whole building back from us. Just 20,000. We started to cry to God and started to pray. As God always does things, it's a, it's a, it's a look, there's, you need to start to walk your own adventurous walk with God. To walk with God is a walk of adventure. As we were praying, a pastor came into the building. I don't know why she came. I don't know who she came to meet. She heard us praying. She heard the prayer team praying about the money. Then she asked, what are they praying about? And they said, oh, they're praying about some money that they were going to take the building. You would not believe that this lady sent that 20000 Went to Papa and said, I'm willing. We too, we are saving for our building. I'm willing. We are, it's not enough yet. We've not gotten in there yet. But I trust you. And I know that you will return it. And it, she gave, it, gave us that 20000 Put your hands together for the Lord. That is what faith can do. If we did not believe. If we allow the past mistakes we've made. The past troubles you've made, maybe sometime when you did something and it didn't work, maybe sometimes when you tried something and it went all bust on you, if, you, if we allowed all that to speak to us, we will not walk by faith. To so are you to start over, you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. And faith still works. Tell your neighbor, faith still works. These days we don't have faith languages in the mouth of people anymore. Faith still works. God still honors faith. When you trust in him, when you believe in him, when you have faith in him, he honors it. He will honor your faith in the name of Jesus. Because of that, Acts 3, let's quickly look at Acts 3, 1 to 5. That's another person. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the night hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they lay daily at the temple, gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arm. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he hid them, expecting to receive something. Human beings said, look on us. And he fastened his face, expecting to receive something. And the word of God says, look unto me, all the ends of the earth. And you are looking away from Christ. If a man said, look on me, and they looked, and he was lifted, and his limbs were restored, how much more Christ himself Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Stop looking unto man to help you. Concentrate on him. Concentrate on Jesus. It is the best asset. He is the, he is the best asset and the best person that can remain with you after a crisis of life. Look unto him. Your business has gone bust. You rise again. I've never seen anybody that is a success, like I said before, that is a success today that was not a failure yesterday. Yes, people would have looked at Apostle Paul and said, my goodness, this man is a failure. Everywhere he went, they were always beating him. What kind of ministry is this? 
I'm sure all his disciples would have left. God has not called this one. And yet, he was right in the will of God for his life. Tell your neighbor, it's time for faith work. Stop worrying about what others will say. Act in faith. Take faith works. Take steps of faith. And God will honor it. Proverbs 29, 25 says, Being afraid of people can get you into trouble. Another translation says, The fear of man brings a sneer. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Another translation says, Fear of man is a dangerous trap. But to trust in God means safety. You want safety? Believe in him. Rely on him. Hang on him. Hold on to him tightly. Everything may shake, everything may go. He won't go. He remains the same. I've seen it over and over again. He remains the same. Many times I've been in soup, I've been in trouble, that I've wondered how come I got into this. And I've held on to him. And I've seen trouble disappear. Whatever you went through last year, that is last year. You're going to move into another, you're in another year, and you are opening a clean slate. God is opening a clean slate for you. And he's saying to you, start acting in faith. Amen. Then R, refocus. Tell your neighbor, refocus. We all know the story of Genesis, of um, Jacob in Genesis. The story between Gen um, the, uh, Jacob and Laban. How Laban wanted to cheat him. He didn't want to pay him his dues. And we saw the wisdom of God came upon Jacob. And what did Jacob do? Jacob put um, the, the, the fine um, sheep, the fine cattle, put it right around um, a striped, he put stripes on something and put it right in front of the sheep. So that when they were mating, when they were drinking, when they were eating, they were looking at it. Their faces were fixed on that striped, striped thing. And they were looking at it. And because they were looking at that striped pat uh, thing, pattern, every child that they gave birth to, every sheep they gave birth to, had stripes. Laban gave him a condition and said, well, I'll pay you. But the way I'll pay you is that I will only give you sheep, cattle that has stripes and spots. He thought he was going to cheat him out of his due. But God gave Jacob a wisdom. What I want to really pass on there is the fact that these sh um, sheep were giving birth to striped animals because they were looking onto striped at, um, striped um, board. They were looking at the striped board. Now, what affected the, the animals that they gave birth to was what they were looking at. Whatever you are going to give birth to in 2014, what is going to affect it is what you are looking at.